Hey everyone, it's Marilyn. Welcome back to KK's Quilt Studio. Hey, had a question the other day about uh, one of my videos or a couple of my videos that I've done about um, organizing all those quilt files that you have and what do you do with all the different machine formats that you get in a zip format when you purchase a design um, from an online company and download it to your computer. So the question was, what do you do with all the TXT, WMF, PDF, GIF files? Or do you delete them? Or do you prefer to file the unzip file under categories? Um, or keep them under the company name? Well, I've talked about both, about how to file them. And that that's really personal preference. But I'm going to talk about... Um, what do you do with all those different files? And well, why do I have a can of green beans here? Well, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, soon after my husband and I got married, some 40 years ago, um, my cousin came to visit. And she was a little bit OCD about organization. Now, I, I, I was a bookkeeper in a former life and did all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I was into organizing and different ways to organize and file and keep things where you can find them and retrieve them. I, I have to admit, I'm a little OCD, but she was particularly OCD about my pantry. She... Um, we were cooking in the kitchen and she went to my pantry and stepped back and said, oh, how can you find anything in this cabinet? Well, the, I knew where everything was, but she thought she needed to rearrange my cabinet for me. She needed to file all my canned vegetable goods in alphabetical order. So can you imagine filing all your quilt files in alphabetical order? And well, let's 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 talk about being OCD. Um, yeah, my green beans did get reorganized, and all my canned goods, my pantry got organized. But can you imagine? We've got green beans, and can you think of all the categories you could keep them in? They're first off, they're green. They're vegetables. They're beans, they're canned goods, they're uh, good for side dishes or casseroles, and you could probably come up with half a dozen other categories, but gosh, there's just six that I could think of off the top of my head. And if you organized your pantry by uh, groups, here's how you could classify your green beans. And well, Alphabetical would be a, a, just another category. So I'd have to have six cans of green beans in order to complete my food groups. Well, we can design our quilt blocks into similar categories. Here I have a block. This block could be put into the block folder. It could be put into a feather folder. It could be put into pearls or hexagons, um, company name, like I had them filed. Um, or the some other one here at the bottom of the screen. It could be a heart. It could be a Valentine's Day, like a holiday category border um, file or an edge to edge. All would be good categories to keep that in. But we don't want to have multiple designs in multiple groups. And that's um, what I was talking about previously in other uh, videos. We, When we download, we get um, multiple file formats. So we already have the exact same copy of a design, um, just in a different machine format. And I'm um, going to talk about the couple things here. So we can uh, file those by the separate file extension categories, or we could file them by um, block types. But we don't want um, to actually reproduce those files. We don't want to have multiple copies of the same file um, on our computer. We want it easily so we can find that 
can of green beans or that edge-to-edge -edge design or the block design. We want an easy way to um, retrieve that design. A lot of times when you download a design, all the designer gave you was a number, perhaps not a name of a file, so it's a little bit harder to retrieve that file. Now I'm going to talk today a little bit about a couple programs that are available for design file organization, and maybe one of these would be more appropriate for you than other um, just file and folder categorizations that I've talked about in previous videos. Um, these programs give design files that tag or name. So you can file them by or tag a certain design with it's a block, it's a feather, it has pearls, it um, might be a hexagon or used for a hexagon quilt. Both of these designs we could file under multiple categories. So under um, Art and Stitch or designed by the same people who brought us Art and Stitch is QE Pattern Finder. Um, this program will not only file quilting designs, but it will also file uh, machine embroidery files. So for those of you who um, have a multitude of machine embroidery files um, as well as quilting files, you can incorporate them all under one program. And I've included the um, website. You can go find more information about both of these programs and find um, videos or screenshots and a complete explanation. Also available is QPI, Quilt Pattern Indexer, and that is brought to you by way of MK Quilts. And again, I've included the um, website that you can go find out more information for this, or you can access a link to it from MK's website if you are familiar with it. A um, little bit different costs in the programs, but Quilt Pattern Indexer does not at this time organize machine uh, quilt or machine embroidery patterns. So um, only QE Pattern Finder is the one that will do both of those um, quilting designs and embroidery or quil quilting designs and embroidery designs are similar in that they are digitized sewing files, one for the uh, machine embroidery side and one for the quilting side. So those are available and you can tag or give certain groups of files if filing by um, company name or pattern name is not um, going to work for you. When you accumulate um, many, many files, um, it's going to be, get to be hard to find the exact pattern. You may spend half your day looking for the exact pattern that you want. Um, if you're looking for something for Valentine's Day or for Christmas and you need to pull up that quilting design quick, you can organize it by categories. So you would assign um, these categories as tags and you would reorganize them without needing to duplicate any files on your computer. You have one location in File Explorer. We talked about that in another video. Um, you have one location for the file and these programs that I talked about, QE Pattern Finder and QPI, will go and locate them for you. They will find them exactly where you file them away on your computer when you originally downloaded them. Now, as far as organizing for um, getting rid of files, let's go take a look at the files that we have. Now here I have opened up Art and & Stitch, and remember that when you go to open a design, um, we're going to take a uh, look at some of the folders I have here on this computer. Um, don't forget that those zip files, you'll see that this is a compressed file, and I just created a compressed file of several 
um, patterns just for demonstration, don't forget that Art and Stitch can look inside those zip files and um, other programs won't be able to do that. Um, these are design files that I have zipped into a compressed file and it um, takes up a lot less room. So you may want to keep your zip files and I'll talk about another reason why um, besides if you ever change machines, um, machine brands, that's an important consideration in keeping other um, file type extensions, but keeping them in a zip file format is the original file and it's compressed. It takes up less room on your hard drive. Um, we've talked about storing in the cloud. You might want to do that. But don't forget, zip files, you can always take a peek in what is in a zip file. You'll see all these different files are in there. And with the preview box checked, you can go down and take a look at any of the files that are contained within that zip file. Now these are all different files, but um, I would save at least the zip file. When you go to unzip a file, you do not need to unzip everything. You can um, only unzip the file that you need. So let's go over to File Explorer and take a look at that. Here in File Explorer, um, you'll see there is that zip file and let's double click on that and that will extract. If you go up here, that will extract. We only want to choose a certain one. So let's choose Dragonflower. So by not selecting all of them, I can open only one at a time. Um, perhaps I only want to open the handy quilter format of this file. And if these were the same Dragonflower file, but QLI or all the different other brand names, it's all the same file, but I only need that HQF file. So I can just take that um, or explode or expand that file out of this zip file. I don't need to open all of them at the same time. So in that regard, I am keeping all those, but I'm keeping them in a compressed or zipped file. And we've talked in other videos about um, uncompressing or extracting files from zip files. So I won't, won't go into that again in this video. So I hope that helps with um, explanation of keeping the extra formats or the extra zip file um, files that come or the extra format files that come in a zip file. So it do I prefer? Um, I prefer to hang on to my zip file, my original file, um, unless the company offers a um, return library where you can go to download any files. I know in the case of embroidery files, embroidery library um, keeps all of the designs that I have ever purchased in a cloud so that I can go at any time and re-download it. Some sites have um, time limits or the number of downloads is limited. So you must keep that into consideration. So it's always going to vary personal preference. I like to file all my zip files, files that I've purchased um, by company name, and then I keep them out in the cloud. That's the safest storage for me um, right now. So that's how I personally prefer to do it. You, um, I've given you several options, how to retrieve files, how to store files, and I hope that this gives you a little bit more food for thought. Now, as far as TXT, um, those can be a text file or those can be a um, format file, it, it, a machine format file. It depends on what they are. PDF, um, files are actually, a lot of times the designer 
will give you a PDF so you can preview it without having to open up your um, viewing software because um, it will only, quilting designs will only associate with a certain software so you can view it like we viewed in Art and Stitch. Art and Stitch will view all the machine types, but um, if you were not in Art and Stitch, your file explorer doesn't necessarily associate a file um, with a picture. You wouldn't be able to view it. So let's go back to um, file explorer again and I'll kind of explain what I mean. Um, to view, I'm, I'm in the file view right now. If you go down here to the bottom right hand corner you'll see that the first box is outlined and that means file view and how you want to view. You can click that box next to it and that will give you a picture format. Um, as you can see all of these are blank. So File Explorer does not know how to view those files. Um, when you click on Open, it wants you to pick an app. So it's not associating those files with any program on your computer. Let's, let's drop back to Quilting Designs. Now you'll see that some of my files have the... Um, Art and Stitch logo that the berry border is an ANS file and we know that that's a working file from Art and Stitch and you'll see that uh, File Explorer recognizes that as a file that it can open with Art and Stitch. So if we go back here to this little open um, and it doesn't pick but it knows that that is an Art and Stitch file. It's not picking a program to associate that with. Let's look at other files in my sync folder so we can come up with other uh, file types. Let's choose this one and find the different one. This is a JPEG file and it's associating it as a picture file. So I could, again, change the view down here in the lower right hand corner and see. Here is a Canvas Workspace file. These are probably SVG files. Um, file Explorer cannot see them, but associates it with either your Chrome Internet Drive or um, with a File Explorer. These files all have, um, these are picture files, so it can view those. That's a ping file. This is also a ping file but it will give you an association. This is probably a JPEG. Nope, that's a ping, ping file as well. Ping files, picture files, it will give you a picture because it can associate, but it's going to find the closest program. These are all FCM files. Yeah, so actually this is a project file from Canvas Workspace. So it associates with the program that you would need to open it. Now that one is associating it with Canvas Workspace. So if I just clicked on the file, it would open Canvas Workspace and then so I could view that particular file. So I hope that's explained a little bit more about File Explorer and how files um, relate and can be organized on your computer. I hope that um, answers your question, gives you a little more information, but doesn't confuse you. I know I've thrown a lot out there. So until we meet next time, I appreciate all the great questions. Keep them coming. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much. And don't forget to click the bell so you get notifications of any time I have new videos up. And until we meet next time, happy quilting!